and let us all that we can to build a better future. On from that story of great debacle and intrigue and politics and such, we're going to move to uh, another story that I picked up today because I just thought it was hysterical. The New York Times, you know that liberal bastion who stands for freedom and democracy and all things green is has written a, um, a sob story on how bad it is to be a young person trying to get into the oil industry. <laughs> and I just, it just tickled me. So I wanted to share it with you all. Um, <laughs> let's talk about it. So students, right. and this is from the New York Times. Thank you so much, by the way. If you go in the description below, you can give us a donation directly on Streamlabs, which we actually get a larger cut of because YouTube picks 30%. This is PayPal, so it's like 2%. So back mm -hmm. to the story. So I'll start from the top. Students and recent graduates struggle to get hired in which oil uh, industry cuts uh, as the industry cuts tens of thousands of jobs, some of which may never come back. Sabrina Burns, a senior at the University of Texas at, Al Texas at Austin, had thought she would be launching a lucrative career in the oil and gas industry when oh, she graduated no. in a f when she when graduated in a few months. But the collapse in the demand of oil and gas during the coronavirus pandemic has disrupted her well laid plans. I love the well laid, like like a like a oil pipeline is what pops in mind. Very alliterative, New mm. York Times, very one, very good. And it's constantly forced to consider her path. We got a slap in the face in an entirely unseen uh situation that rocked our entire mindset, said Miss Burns, who is studying petroleum engineering. Quote, I have applied for every oil and gas position I've seen, like all my classmates, and really nothing has turned up. I'm discouraged. Won't With someone fewer think of big oil? <laughs> yeah. With fewer people commuting and traveling, the oil and gas industry has taken a punishing blow. Oil companies have laid off more than 100,000 workers. Many businesses have closed refineries, and some have sought bankruptcy protection, which is, I thought, like, sort of the rallying cry of, like, the green energy movement, but okay. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. These students are seeking elite positions in a oil and gas industry that employs about 2 million people. Even after recent layoffs, petroleum companies still employ more people than the fast. Oh, I, lo I love this dig that they had to throw in here. Thanks, New York Times, Bastion of Freedom and Democracy, so and so. Even after the layoffs, petroleum companies still employ more people than the fast growing wind and solar businesses, which have a combined workforce of at least 370,000, according to trade groups. I don't know why you had to add that in there. That just seems like a pointless dig for no apparent reason other than to pick an allegiance. When, you know, it, it's, yeah, okay, yeah, they, there aren't as many people that are working for wind and solar power that have, like, been relevant in a real scalable way for, like, a decade, a decade and a half, maybe two, whereas oil has, like, peaked in efficiency and been around and been a staple of, like, five or six generations of America. Okay, in that time, it's... What is that? 20% as big, roughly, as the oil industry? That seems... I don't know. I'm getting too much into it. So, even before the pandemic, Miss Burns said she had some doubts about her chosen industry, other students, and even Uber drivers ferrying her and others to a petroleum industry banquet. Ooh, wow, that sounds fun. Let me go. Do I have to wear a black tie? Is it oil? I don't know. Try to make a joke. Man, uh, in a, you're not in a that conference. In a 2018 race about how it's really good for the... And the trees are like... Coal, carbon. They like it a lot. That's She's like grow. carbon? That's what, that's what I've been told by oil executives. Wow, okay. Anyway, so about uh, the future of oil and gas and why renewable might be a uh, better bet. And this is a great quote that they threw in here. I love that they threw it in here. It's also funny for the same reason as that other dig was funny. Do you ever hear about uh, hear of a solar panel? She recalls the Uber driver asking her and her friends. The silent judgment and passing comments weigh on me a lot, she added. Her parents persuaded her to stick with her program, and Miss Burns said she was committed to the industry and working to improve its environmental performance. Well, that's wonderful. What? But uh, Mr. This other guy, Zagurski, 23, said the oil and gas industry will bounce back just as it has many times over the century, despite many popular notions the pandemic would permanently reduce energy consumption habits. Quote, demand is going to come back. Let's be honest here. How many things in our daily lives have some kind of petroleum-based product in them he is an internship oh i love this part why he's a little more a uh, little more optimistic why so he has an internship with roxana oil a small company with managers who are his second cousins and oh, he has okay. been steadily given greater responsibility that's good that hereditary oh. rule is helping out that buddy good but for junior i just wanted to point out that the, the fact that the new york times wrote this right now just seems like 
guys, why did you do this? Did you really need to do this? Was this really the time? It, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. Has the, I, the renewable first, industry first. seems to be doing okay right now? Maybe this is a good example of why we should move away from all this oil stuff. Maybe this is a good example, as I know Jose would always bring up, why we should be working to get the technology of getting hemp turned into plastic revved up using less plastic overall. But no, the New York Times is like, we got to write about these these kids and these programs. And by the way, is it like I've seen like these sort of stories written where it's where they're like, oh, stupid college kids. Entering into an industry that doesn't really have any pay. How stupid are they taking out college loans to become a French history or a French art uh, teacher or, you know, a degree or something? It's like, oh, there's oil is sort of on that track. It's not like a spring mm-hmm. chicken like it used to be. They are tra- They have to go into, uh, they have to be digging up uh, 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 tar sands. Yep. That's how far we've gotten. And now I was reading, they're like, well, there's technically these hydrates that are deep under the water. And they have oil in them. Maybe we can get those things. I don't know. We've gone through most of the easy oil, guys. We got this thing. It's dark right now, but there's this thing outside in the sky. It's a fusion reactor. It's really big, really strong. You could just take a thing like a solar panel or through thermal things like wind, just put it there and just collect it directly instead of digging up get out of here hundreds with your of millions of year old get, get out of here with your science. Daniel, oil. can't you see that the point, whole point of that article was that the New York Times probably got a big check from some oil executive saying, I need you to write the smallest violin story for all the hard workers in big oil because how else are we going to get more pipelines built? How many pipelines are we going to need to build? I mean, here's the, here's the issue. Again, the New York Times... There's never been a war that they didn't like. When was the last time the New York Times has been this roaring lion? Oh, wait, this is the same New York Times that endorsed the Klobuchar and the Warren as their two presidential oh, picks. Yeah. How'd that turn out, New York Times? This is the same New York Times that keeps on telling us that, oh, uh, Trump's bad, but, you know, disregard all the wars. I mean, when, when, he, when, when he does the bombing in Syria, then he's presidential. Yeah. Oh, disregard any right. kind of, oh, corruption that's taking place. This New York Times, why write this article? When the world is suffering from climate change, the big one of the few one of the biggest threats impacting humanity as a whole. But oh no, we got to hear their sob story because you know for, forget forget the idea of student debt, forget the idea of climate change, forget the idea that we are dealing with an economic crisis. We got to care about big oil. So Daniel, mm-hmm. when the New York Times gets a check from big oil, we got to be quiet. Yeah, I suppose we do. But yeah, that's the other thing. But that, but that's what I think of that article from the New York and Times. It, and as far as I'm concerned, you should uh, rip it up and throw it in front of the camera. It's like, <laughs> that's the thing. Let me help the New York Times out really quickly before we move on. Yeah. It's getting more expensive to extract oil. And the oil's less clean as it goes. And it's getting way cheaper to install solar and wind. And I want to remind everyone, oil is under an enormous amount of subsidies that wind and solar don't have access to, and they're still kicking its ass in new development. I think actually from uh, 2020, most of the new energy development in the U.S. was renewables. Mm -hmm. So it's already happening. So everyone that's even saying, hey, why don't we, oh, 20, 30 years, it might be a tipping point sooner or later than we think. 